Welcome back to the Pulse with Willie and Al. How you doing today, bud? Oh man, we're doing all right. Doing all right. Yeah. How are you? I'm good, man. We are. Uh, it is May first. It is May first. We've started May. Uh, rainy day here, but uh, a little bit older today. So uh, yeah, now I'm now I'm 38 instead of 37. So <laughs> I'm definitely Willie, feeling it. Why don't you tell them the lesson that you learned today about uh, what happens the day after your birthday? In oh, so this is kind of an amazing thing. So uh, whereas the Labor Day in America falls in September, is that right? The beginning of, first se- Monday of September, first yep. Monday of September, it actually falls on May 1st uh, in Turkey, which is kind of cool. So for the foreseeable future, as long as I stay in Istanbul, uh, I will have the day after my birthday off every year. Uh, which is very, very nice. Uh, as you get older, you need more um, time to recuperate after birthdays. So uh, definitely an awesome thing. But uh, glad to be here. Glad to be back, bro. And uh, we're, we're bringing episode 41, man. Uh, yeah. We're doing some draft recap. Uh, and that's the other thing that I was going to mention about the end of April, which is a really great thing, is not only is it my birthday and the end of almost all of my friends' birthdays, which is kind of funny, but uh, uh, it is also the NFL draft every year. So it always falls at the end of April. So a lot of good things to look forward to in this action-packed month. Now today yeah. we get to talk about them. So uh, we are here before we jump into things real quick. Go ahead and make sure you smash that subscribe button. Make sure you like the video. Uh, and we will dive into things here, man. We've got uh, drafts that that we love. Uh, why don't you go ahead and take it off? You you go ahead and start. Oh, take it off. Whoa. Yeah. Wow, sure. <laughs> go ahead. Start things off. What draft did, did you love this year that they had so far? Sir, let's... Um... Sorry, you were cutting out there. Could you repeat that? Ah, uh, yeah, draft set that we loved so far in this NFL draft this year. Which one did you enjoy? I I think you and I are going to come to the same conclusion. I really liked what Philadelphia did. Cool. Man, they got. I felt like their first and second round picks were both just steals, like just absolute highway robbery. Yeah, uh, I I agree with you on that. Actually, Pennsylvania in general, uh, not only the Eagles, but the Steelers, I think, also had an excellent draft. Uh, the way both of their and that's what you get when you have Omar Khan, uh, you know, as a GM, you're and, and Howie Roseman. You've got guys that are seasoned vets when it comes to understanding that that room and what to be able to do. Um, they work those draft rooms hard, and it was really neat to be able to see both of them kind of operate. Um, again, in this day of social media, where you get all the videos afterwards, you get to see exactly what they're able to do uh, behind the scenes. It makes it really enjoyable. So, um, but yeah, uh, I really also like the Washington Commanders, like the Cardinals as well. I thought they did some great things as well. Uh, I know we shared some videos before with Ozzy from uh, the GM from the Cardinals. He's kind of awesome behind the scenes and what he's able to yeah. do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, overall, I think that it felt like there was a lot of teams that like drafted well. Um, and I think that your Colts did really well. And I think that with the run that there were on receivers, I I think they got a steal at 15. Uh, and I honestly, like, I really liked what they did. Like, I think they, they addressed a lot of needs in the draft that, you know, like you and I had talked about last week, they, they have to overhaul that defense. Absolutely. And it's not great. And I think they did a great job of addressing that in the draft. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. You know what's interesting too? And I think I had mentioned this to you before that one of the people, one of my former bosses actually was college roommates with Chris Ballard uh, from the Colts, yeah. which is it's kind of a, a neat twist to things. But he, um, Chris Ballard always is, strikes me as a guy that just, he is his skirt is blown up when he sees exceptional talent and he's very, very good at identifying that 
and always they have always seemed to bring good guys in. And even thinking back into the days of Peyton Manning, there they rarely had bad drafts. They had some the last couple of years, um, you know, where they had some picks that just weren't that great. But uh, Chris Ballard knows how to be able to draft effectively, and you know him him getting Ad Mitchell there, and also Latu in the in the first round. I mean, that was just those were excellent picks for them. Uh, whereas you look at it, those guys never should have been in the positions that they were uh, to be able to be drafted at that point. But just an awesome, awesome draft for the Colts too. A uh, few things I think they could have done better on, but uh, I do really think pass rusher and wide receiver were two big things they needed to address. I would have liked to see them go after one of the corners that were there too, because I think having a lockdown corner is something they're going to find out that they really needed to address uh, come yeah. this season. Uh, it's, it's especially in that division where you've got guys that just got better, right? Like look at Tennessee, you've got Deandre yeah. Hopkins, you've got Calvin Ridley, uh, over in Jacksonville, I don't know what they're doing over there, but Houston, Houston got better, right? With Diggs, you got Tank Dell there, Nico Collins. Like y- you need to have lockdown defenders um, on, on the perimeter. So, well, um, Tank Dell has to stop getting shot first. Like, let's, let's yeah, man. Good like, Lord. A good thing that he's okay, right? Like, yeah, it just, for real. That's... I mean, there's not much to him as it is, but it, it really like yeah. scary to think that he was even involved in something like that. Uh, you know, where he had the potential to get get hurt pretty badly. So, definitely very happy for him. Um, I think I think with the Colts too, though, I I I almost I kind of like what they did, and I know they should have taken a corner with a, their first round pick, and there were plenty to choose from. Mm-hmm. I think I actually kind of like the pick just because their D line is one of their strengths. Yep. By far, it's, it's probably their biggest strength they have on that team. With Buckner, like, and they yeah, took, yeah, they took kind of the best available guy, and like I think their their thought is, you know what, we rush the passer really well. Let's keep doing that, and if you could really rush the passer well, like I don't think you necessarily need a lockdown corner because like they're already throwing that ball way too soon. Yeah, and, your front seven. Like, yeah, yeah. He- you're absolutely right, man. It gives them more yeah. time, and it, you can be less elite on at the cornerback position if your guys get after the pass rusher. And effectively, yeah. you may not need them, right? I mean, ideally, yeah. but it doesn't always work that way. But um, yeah. let's talk about some of the drafts that we hated. Uh, for me, it was the Falcons, but I know everyone wants to rain on that parade. What What about you? Um, I, you and I, I think, also kind of want to talk about Denver. <laughs> because I, and I'm gonna use some foul language here, so uh, Big Ray, I apologize in advance, but what in the actual fuck? Yeah, like for real. Like you, you and I have talked on the show about Bo Nix and how much we both like secretly loved him, but like loved him like day two, day three. Like, yeah, we loved him. Like we loved him from afar. Mm-hmm. Not with the 12th goddamn pick of this draft. Yeah, like, I don't know. I just see... So, like... All right. So, I I think first we need to set the foundation and talk about the Falcons first. And then come back to Denver because I want to build on this, right? Yeah. So, Falcons, they go in and take Penix. I know that's the point of contention we've heard font to not go back and forth on uh, not really back and forth but give his opinion on why it is that they drafted michael Penix. they really liked him they were sold by this guy um it kind of is like hey i got married to this and had a wedding and all of this with kirk cousins but then i found another chick too and she's really nice and it turns out like she she does more than my wife does now right like it's just kind of like yeah. a weird situation for that um, he's already 24, so it's not like he's a 20 year old or 21 year old coming into the league. This guy's already an adult. He's going to be 26, 27 by the time they expect him to start if Kirk Cousins yeah. is healthy, right? And if not, I just don't see it ending up because it's either a bad free agency signing with Kirk Cousins if he gets hurt, right? Or if he's not how he used to be. Yeah. Or it's a wasted first contract with a first round pick that they really could have gotten a a clear difference maker. I mean, Byron Murphy was there. You had uh, 
I mean, L- Latu was there. You had other pass rushers you could go after, right? Yeah. Um, you could have gone offensive line, which I didn't think was a need for them, but like they chose to go quarterback. So, I mean, we could all be looking very stupid at the end of this. Um, I mean, we we really could. But I mean, another guy that was there too, Romo Ondunze, right? Like, I, I mean, the, he was kind of gift wrapped to the Bears at that point. I love that the Bears got him, right? I like, absolutely love that the Bears got him. I just, I don't know. Like, even yeah. if they went lockdown corner in a league where you need multiple good cornerbacks, they could have gone Kenyon Mitchell. But no, what, what? Instead of drafting a quarterback, you leave him on the board, and then, uh, you know, Philly ends up getting him, and then it's like now they've got you know, a a lockdown corner. So you made yourself almost worse and made another team better in your conference. Right. So it makes it more difficult to get to the dance. Right. I just, I I don't know. Whoa. That's the thing is I think Penix would have been there in the second round or the third round. Like you could have, you could have spent like a second or third rounder on it. Mm -hmm. And like, I think I would have been okay with that. Right. I just, the, the team had so many glaring holes and like, I, but I, that, that being said, I, I think that also there's a world because Cousins suffered that Achilles injury towards the end of the season. Mm-hmm. I, I'm i not certain that he's ready for week one. Yeah, there's a possibility of that. Um... But like, even then, like, just go in the back. Like, I, I don't think Penix is going to be your god. Like, that's kind of an unfair situation to put him in because mm-hmm. like, it's if he plays well, like then what do you do? Like right. you got a guy that you just you're paying a hundred million dollars guaranteed to sit on the bench. Like you, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like right, yeah, it's a really shitty situation, and I don't, I don't love it. I, I don't like. Yeah, I think even so, when you look at that, like with what happened with the Falcons, then it kind of sets it in perspective with how bad what Denver did was because if you can get to understanding the pick of Michael Penix there, I don't know how you get to the point of understanding why they took Bo Nix. Because if Atlanta says, Hey, listen, we're, we wanted him because we fell in love with this guy. And like, we're in win now mode and and all of that. Denver's not in win now mode at all. They need so many pieces on that team. And I know like they could have waited and gone Spencer Rattler out of South Carolina, right? They, they, they could have waited another round and gone Bo Nix later. They could have done many no. things. Now I know they drafted one of Nix's receivers, right? Out of Oregon. So now he's got a guy there he feels comfortable with. Now you can match him up with Cortland Sutton. Like there's other guys there too, but it just, for me, I just, I don't know. I felt like it was a huge reach for a pick and a lot of draft capital to spend and, and those are marquee picks. You don't get those back, right? Yeah. Now, if Bo Nix goes on and sets the, the league on fire, then it makes us look really bad. But, yeah. and I, I'm kind of hoping that's what happens with Denver, that like he plays very, very well and Sean Payton gets the most out of him and they do very well. But it, I don't think they have enough around him to be very, very successful right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least with Atlanta, offensively, they're they're good enough that like, sure, th- their pick of Penix was like not great, but like they already know who they are on offense. Yeah, they got Bijan, they got Kyle Pitts, like they know who they are on offense. Yeah, with they Drake just, London, they'll be good. Yeah, yeah, and like they already have they already have Kirk Cousins, who you know who he is in the court as a quarterback in the NFL. Mm-hmm. But like Denver, Denver has zero identity. Yeah, I I. I see Denver finishing in the bottom five teams this year. Uh, and I know that's scary yeah. to say, but like they, they lost their, the, the, they lost their leader on defense. They lost their leader on offense. Like they've got Patrick Sertan and Cortland Sutton and a lot of other guys, right? Like you, you can't tell me that Zach Wilson's going to be your number one this year. Yeah. That's like, you can't that's, tell, like that's, but I don't think team. it's fair to run Bo Nix out there either. Right. Like that's no. a, it's a scary thing, but because if it, because if you don't run out Bo Nix and you're terrible, that buys you at least another year. Right, right. Where you another year of free agency, another year of um, draft capital to to put around him. You know, there's a lot that you can build around him with to make him successful yeah. in his next year. And like what the Bears did with Caleb Williams should be kind of like a 
um, a case study because they've made him, they've put him in position to be able to succeed, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, interesting thing I came across that Adam Schefter had posted on Twitter um, about guys drafted in the first round. And he took like a basically like a snapshot of guys drafted from the year 2000 to 2019. So 20 drafts. Right. Um, and they categorized it by position, like what guys ended up um, hitting on their draft position, um, what guys re- and basically the way they determined that was which of these guys re-signed their next contract. So not only did they play through their first contract, but they re-signed another contract after that. Um, So center led the way, right? Like 12 were drafted in the first round. 11 of them signed their their second contract, which I thought was brilliant. Um, Wide receiver is what everyone thinks would have a huge impact. There was 77 drafted, only 21 of them hit, and 56 missed, which is like a big woof, man. Um, but yeah. the, the top three positions in terms of guys that made it that were hit picks um, were center, offensive tackles and guards. And the bottom three were safety, tight end and wide receiver. So if you're looking at guys that are going to hit. Usually it's going to be the linemen, right? Offensive line in the first round, which is not a flashy pick when you have guys like that are pass rushers you have quarterbacks there all of that but i don't know like i i wonder if this is going to turn the tide we'll see in four or five years right when it's time for the next contract yeah but yeah i also there's another team i want to talk about real quick that i i don't love and i it's yeah. carolina yeah like carolina already suffering the well we should have had the number one pick this year and we got rid of that because we wanted bryce young mm-hmm. we don't know is good but like it is what it is but then for them to trade back at the end of the first round and get a guy that, frankly, like I like, he's a fine player, but like, what, what the fuck are we doing? Like, <laughs> there just seems like there's no organizational, like, there's no vision in Carolina. There isn't. Like, it's just, it feels like Carolina is just throwing a bunch of stuff at a wall and hoping something sticks. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a fan of Leggett, but. I I'm not a huge fan of of his game and I think he's uh, unpolished fully as a receiver. I want to see him grow into that. I think it is good because it gives Bryce Young someone young to be able to throw to. Uh Deontay yeah. Johnson should help him there. The line they went out and and made some moves to give him a chance. So we may see a chance this year for Bryce Young to actually have some sort of potential, but Last year was a dumpster fire. Like it was, it was yeah. awful, man. Like, and I felt and really I bad for him. Hmm? And I don't, I, I don't think, I, I think he's a rookie. He was a rookie, and I, mm-hmm. I think that some of that was just like, hey, you're a rookie in the NFL, and that's tough. But and so like, was CJ Stroud. Yeah, but like, also, I don't. A lot of what happened last year, I don't think is his fault. Like, yeah. look at the team they put around that. Yeah, guy. They, they, dude, the offensive line was was horrible. They didn't really have many playmakers. It seems like. And then even look at what Carolina has done within the last 12 months, right? Like, uh, I I guess even go back further than that. Maybe the last 18 months when they trade away McCaffrey, like then Brian Burns, like it's just, and the Rams were going to give them two first round picks for Brian Burns and they turned him down. Right. And the Rams love giving away first round picks. Yeah, they do. They love that. They do. Uh, they do so um i i was gonna ask like obvious <laughs> this is kind of a, a rhetorical question but uh which pick in the first round do you think is a lock to be a stud and i, I know the popular pick is caleb williams right but i i'm i i want to go somewhere else with that so wh- where do you think who do you think in the first round is going to be a lock to be an absolute stud i think two i, I think there are two mm-hmm. I, I think that harrison at four mm-hmm. i think is like, that guy has all the talent in the world. And I watched him for the past two years at Ohio State put up just identical numbers each season. And this past season, he was getting doubled every yeah. game, all game. And he still – and he impacted the game in ways. Like, there were a couple times where he'd have games where it was, like, four catches for 28 yards, but he had two touchdowns. Yeah. Like – Getting you know in the I mean? end zone like, matters. Yep. Yeah, like, that's still impacting the game. And I think – that he, I think this is a real threat that he could have where he, he's a big bodied receiver who can just jump, he can jump really high and has exceptional hands. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, who was then, the second uh, guy you had? Uh, the guy, Ozun, out of uh, the, the guy the Bears got at nine. Yeah. Because I think that, like, now grabbing him means that, like, his, his job's going to be easy because everybody's going to be so focused on Keenan Allen. And I think he's going to get a lot of opportunities that, like, he's going to put up a lot of numbers. The Bears he's get just, a lot of one on one coverage. Yeah. The Bears just over the course of the draft just upgraded their offense big time by adding, sure you know, who we thought was going to be there in Caleb Williams, but then getting Romo Dunze there at the, you know, at the ninth pick. That's a big, yeah. big deal to come in behind Keenan Allen and DJ Moore and Cole Komet there too. And DeAndre Swift, that offense is going to look good. Yeah. Um, very interesting yeah. for, for me, I went a little bit of a different route, I guess, kind of the safer one, but I picked Graham mm -hmm. Barton in Tampa Bay. Um, and the reason I did that, like, first of all, I thought he was excellent at Duke. Um, but I think he's going to step right in. Like they were definitely missing, uh, at center with Ryan Jensen, not there, you know, he had like the knee surgery that it kind of got infected, I think. And they weren't able to, his knee was just never right again after that, which was just yeah. a rough thing to see. But uh, Robert Hainsey ended up taking over for him last year, but I think uh, Grant Barton's going to step in and be an instant upgrade on that line. And I think you're going to see an even better Tampa Bay team this year, which I don't know, man, with the, with the storylines that are going on in that division, you could, I could see Tampa Bay running away with the division again. I know, I, I think I'm going to pick Atlanta, but Tampa Bay should not be counted out. Uh, they, they definitely yeah. have, have, done their due diligence and, and really provided some good support for not only Baker, but the offense there. But um, right. who do you see falling short um, of, of where they were drafted in, in the first round? I hope we don't agree you on know, this. I, but... <laughs> I saw your answer and I know that it's, I know for you, it's Drake May. Yeah. I actually think it's Jaden Daniels from the eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because historically, Washington doesn't do a great job of drafting quarterbacks. They just don't. Mm -hmm. They don't do a great job of developing them. Like Kirk Cousins was the last good quarterback that they got, and he kind of fell to their lap in the second round. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and like to be honest with you, like they he left just as he was getting really good. Yeah. Um, and like obviously the comparisons of Jane Daniels is RG three, like, and like. I, I think he's as good as RG3 in, in college, but, like, the problem is, is, like, RG3 at least had a body that, like, could take some hits. I'm not sure Jane Daniels can do that, and he's yeah. the face of that franchise, Franchise, and I I just don't know, man. Yeah, you I brought it up a few times man. about his size and stuff, and that's a that's going to be a difficult thing. Uh, I, I Like, I just don't know how you can put on, like, that much muscle. Like, he's 200 pounds soaking wet. Yeah, they got to get him in a program, man. Um and, and, and like you a... can out, oh, so I was gonna say you can outrun the guys in college. You can outrun ninety nine percent of them. But you can't in the NFL. Yeah, the, everyone's fast in the NFL, and that's a big deal. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I, I know you spoiled it with Drake May, but I just for the same reasons that Mac Jones didn't have success, I just feel like they don't have enough playmakers around him. Um, but I could also uh, pivot on that and say uh, Penix, right? Because like if he ends up not playing, then it's kind of like a he's definitely falling short of where he was drafted. Right. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I just, I don't want to rehash that. Cause it's just a, you know, not a fun thing to be able to talk about, but. Um, I want to, can I, can I push back on, on the Drake May thing? For yeah, a sure. I, think, I don't expect a lot of things from New England this year. Let's, mm -hmm. let's start with that. I think they're one, I think that defense is going to keep them in a lot of games. Yep. And I think they're one more four and 13 season away from, I think actually, not like contending for a Super Bowl, but like challenging for a, that like seven seventh playoff spot in the AFC. Yeah, so like I, I do like the the what they did in this draft though. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I they do. had a bad draft. Um, no. I'm glad that Kraft didn't have his finger on the button. Uh, Me too. You know, uh, and I think out of all the teams in the NFL that could be bad this year, if the Patriots are one of them, I don't think Gerard Mayo's job is in jeopardy. No, unless he's he, got a three, four year window. Yeah, unless he he's, loses he's every game this entire season, which I don't think will happen. I I think his job is safe, and they understand it's going to be a process of him building and renewing the culture he, there. Respectfully, even if he lost every game, I don't I don't think he would get fired. Mm -hmm. I I don't. I think that they really 
They've had the succession plan in place for a long time. And I think they're going to give them four years minimum to like at least see if they can turn this around and this to be a, a fairly competitive team. Yeah. Like, uh, I do like, I do like, yeah, I, I wish that they had done a better dro- job of dro- uh, addressing the line issues, but like, they got Caden Wallace in the third round, who's like pretty decent. He's got really good hands at, a, I think he, Penn State, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, yeah, it's fine. Like, yeah. I, I don't think Drake May is going to like, I, I think the Patriots as a, as a fan base, we have low expectations this year. So like if Drake may like is just reasonably average, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Well, uh, that, that kind of segues into what we were going to talk about next is like who you think the steal of the draft was, because like, I think, you know, it's, it's great to see teams find value uh, with certain picks and stuff. And I know for, for me, like the Colts getting AD Mitchell, I thought that was a great pick, right? Like the guy's got four, three speed. I was shocked. He was still there in the second round, but for them to be able to scoop back and get him, um, I thought was great because they desperately needed a burner on that offense. Um, but what about you? Who did you see as a, as a steal? Uh, we talked about this a little bit before, but like, I think everything the Eagles did, yeah, would, they were all steals. They were all steals. Dude, like, so I, I just don't get how they keep doing it. I don't understand it's it. Howie Roseman just like reloads, right? Like, and so like defensive back was like the big, one of their biggest points of contention last year, right? Like they really needed good defensive backs because Darius Slay uh, is getting a little bit older, right? Like it's just, they had a little bit of a, rough, a lot of a rough season last year. Um, they bring CJ Gardner Johnson back. Then they go out, they end up drafting Kenyon Mitchell. Uh, yeah. They follow that up with Cooper DeGene, who should not have been there when they when they traded back up to get him. Um, it just, that was an excellent pick, and he is going to be an unbelievable playmaker on that defense. Like, when you have guys like yeah. Jordan Davis, and, like, don't, don't forget, like, their front seven are terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. For him to be able to play on the back end, dude, you and I could be running as defensive backs on the back of that defense and have a shot, right? Like, and uh, not really, but I was like, you at least have the the, the height. I, I do not. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I just thought I thought they were both brilliant picks, um, and it just shows like Howie Roseman, like it's he just it's a master class in how to be able to work a draft, right? Also, mm-hmm. also the fact that they traded up to get Jeremiah Trotter's kid, yeah who is he was kind of a beast at Clemson yeah like yeah. I know he was playing for him when they kind of had some down years but like mm-hmm. dude was a stud on defense and they this defense they just completely retooled this defense on the fly again and yeah added yeah. some really good pieces to it um the the last one I wanted to mention just because like I feel like this guy was so good in college and I was shocked that like okay so it's not a premium position that a lot of teams want to take a safety in the first round but this guy was first round talented was javon bullard from uh georgia i mean this this guy is just awesome and for green bay to get him in the second round i just thought it was an it was an, an amazing pick by them because they needed after savage ends up leaving they need safety help right and like this guy comes in and he's just going to instantly be a trendsetter uh, on that defense. He's going to set the tone. Like you, it, it just, I don't know. I'm really, really hyped for that pick. And he was a guy too at Georgia. Like Georgia has been pretty dominant as of late. Mm-hmm. And he didn't get it. He doesn't get talked about enough because of all the stars that Georgia had on yeah. defense. Yeah, but he was a big reason you could never throw on Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. It's, because um... he was honestly the quarterback of the defense. Mm-hmm. Like he made sure all, everybody was always in position, and that dude's a ball hawk for a safety. Yeah, a straight up ball hawk. I'm, so I'm super excited for for them, uh, and it, it'll be interested, uh, interesting to see. Like Gudikis just figures it out again, right? Like every time people want to talk badly about him or whatever, he ends up figuring it out, right? <laughs> it makes us all look bad. Um, 
All right. So moving on, just a, a few things I wanted to touch on before we wrap up here. Um, Wait, can we can we talk about one more thing? Real yeah, quick? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, can we just talk about the Lions for a second? Two things. A, John Dorsey, how he's the funniest man every year at the draft. <laughs> and I love, I love everything about that. Yep. But also the fact that they they kind of they traded back up into the first round and got Terry and Arnold. Yeah. Man, like yeah, that yeah. that dude was good. That dude was good. Like Not again. A- not only that's a Dan that, Campbell dude. Yeah, it, that's a Dan Campbell guy. I I thought they were gonna take Cooper DeJean, but they they didn't. And Arnold, listen, it's a great pick. It really is. Yeah. Um, it just shows like, uh, for, for the, it's a culture change there, right? And it's a process, and they've bought yeah. into it there. The organization understands the way it needs to be done, and they experienced a lot of success last year because of it. Um, they are trying to make sure that they're going to be back where they were last year. And I think they're doing a good job of that. Um, also, yeah. shout out to Detroit for hosting it and having like over 200,000 more people than Nashville had uh, when yeah. they hosted it. It was like, it was unbelievable. Fans showed up and showed out. It was really, really cool. So yeah, um, I agree. Uh, just real quick, uh, before we jump into some of these teams and stuff, I just wanted to mention uh, the story about Brendan Rice. I know we had talked about this before from USC, but like he got a call from the Chargers when he was at his friend's funeral. Um, yeah. Just a, a really somber and kind of sad thing, but kind of an uplifting spiritual thing, if you believe in that, to, that it's amazing the way it kind of worked out for him. And really excited for him and the that phone call about like him saying like you don't know who you drafted like i'm coming to to like be the best that i can be couldn't be happier to want to root for a guy like that so um really happy if you get a chance check it out on youtube but really uh, an awesome awesome piece by him uh and and we uh, you know john harbaugh and and the gm there what nice job handling that right like in a just an appropriate yeah. way um weren't too hype of, on the phone call or anything like that but just like very respectful i thought it was a really nice touch so um yeah. just some some teams that i wanted to talk about real quick uh and i know everyone wants to harp on atlanta we've already beat them down into a pulp at this point but uh my big beef is with buffalo and minnesota after this draft um and not in terms of how bad they were but some of the decisions they made um first yeah. let's start with buffalo <laughs> so um oh man so let's start with buffalo and what they've did slash done for the world champs uh kansas city gets the fastest player in the draft um set the combine yeah. record um buffalo is i don't know if you know this but they're actually batting a thousand against kansas city right now and that's yeah. probably a head scratcher for you but uh let, let me explain um sure. 13 seconds left, come back in the playoffs. We all know yep. that one. Uh, 2017, they draft Mahomes. Uh, you did that. Um, they draft, uh, They traded back and allowed yep. Kansas City to trade up to draft Mahomes. Um, also missed the field goal this year to tie the game and didn't get it done. So yep. um, they traded with Kansas City in this draft and gave them Xavier Worthy, uh, who everyone's been talking about now. Uh, probably the most hype wide receiver in the draft now afterwards because of where he went. Uh, but I just don't understand. Like they took Keon Coleman out of Florida state. I understand that's like, I don't know if you saw the video of when Florida state did not get into the college football playoff, but it was kind of depressing. And yeah. he was one of the guys in the locker room that was the most hurt and beat up by that. And that's the type of guy I want on my team. A guy yeah. that really cares. And so, like, I think he's a gr- a good player. I just think they needed more there. I would have rather see them go for A.D. Mitchell or someone like that who was still available there. I just, I don't know. I Even if they went worthy, like, I think it would have provided them a solid burner in this division, which they definitely need when you got guys like Tyreek Hill, Garrett Wilson's in, in New York, right? Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know, man. Like, wh- what were your thoughts on Buffalo? I think Keon Coleman actually, um, I think he was a bigger reason Florida State was as good as they were this year. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, And if we ever have the time, I can go on a 20-minute rant on why I thought Florida State got hosed and should have been in the playoff. But that's another story for another time. But Mm -hmm. Keon Coleman's a good – I agree with you. I think Keon Coleman's a a good receiver. 
but there were just better receivers available. If you're trying to replace Diggs, like there are just better dudes available. Yeah. Um, I'm not even sure you can replace Diggs, but I just wasn't happy with it. And I hope uh, it's nothing against Coleman. I like him. I, I really do. But I just think the Bills needed more. And I, I, I don't know why you're doing the world champs any favors. I, I just yeah. don't get it, man. I, I It doesn't make sense to me. But I don't know. Bean came on Pat McAfee and was like talking about it and kind of defending what they did. But it's like, I don't know. It's just the optics of it do not look good. There, I will tell you, there was a pick that they made, and I think it was in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. They got this running back out of Kentucky, uh, Ray Davis. And dude, this dude in the SEC, he just ran over everyone. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think he's going to be a really good back for Buffalo. And I and I think Buffalo is going to try to get back to like playing Smash Mouth football this year, and I think he's going to be a big reason for that. Like two headed monster, James he, Cook, and him. Yeah, I think yeah. him and Cook. I think is going to be a really fun backfield to watch, and I'm actually that's I'm weirdly excited for that. Yeah, we could come up with a funny name for that, like Ray is cooking or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be yeah. awesome, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm hoping. Like, I just, I don't know. The optics on it, like I said, weren't great. But hopefully they're able to to get it done this year. And, and the thing is, they've got Josh Allen, too. He's going to figure it out. He doesn't care that yeah. they don't have a stud at a position. He's going to make a guy better. He's that type of dude. So um, my my other big issue was with Minnesota, man. And I don't know if you you heard much about this. But, like, I know, like, so a lot of experts said that Minnesota had a good draft and I just was scratching my head, man. Like, so you got JJ McCarthy, Dallas Turner. I, I, I understand those, those are amazing picks, but like they better be because you gave up a lot to be able to get them. A yeah. Lot. They only have three picks in 2025 now. Yeah, I man. Like, I, I don't know. Like it just seemed like so much like, I don't know. It was head scratching to me. I don't even want to go into explaining like all the picks they gave up for it because it's just frustrating. I think, yeah, I think too. I think the, the part that was really confusing to me is they didn't have to trade up from 11 to 10 and maybe the jets thought, like tricked him into thinking they were going to take McCarthy at 10. Yeah. And if that's the case, kudos to them uh, for gaming Minnesota. But like, there was no way you, like it just i that's always silly to me when teams trade up one spot yeah man i just i don't know it, it was way too much to give up for that little skip and like it has to make it worth it it has to be right like and i i don't know he could be good but like out of all the quarterbacks he was like he had like the less the, the least appealing uh, of the first round yeah first round quarterbacks he seemed yeah he's a national champ i get that but like there's a great team around him um you know you know who this mccarthy gives me kind of vibes of and not a good way he kind of gives me christian ponder vibes and that's not great if you're fighting <laughs> that's not great yeah i i don't know i think he's gonna be better than that but I don't I know, so. man. I feel <laughs> like I feel like Harbaugh was gassing teams up too, and like, oh, this kid's so good, and like oh, sure. all of that, just so that like, you know, I I don't know. Maybe he thought that they they were worried about Joe Alt not being there because there was yeah. rumors that other teams were going to take Alt at possibly three or four. But I don't know, man. I I just I don't know. For me, it's a head scratcher. But we're going to be able to see kind of how some of this stuff unfolds in training camp, preseason, all of that stuff. But I think I do think that the thing that is in Minnesota's favor is that McCarthy's coming into a situation where you get to throw to Justin Jefferson, yeah, and Jordan Addison, and eventually, and yeah, eventually T.J. Hawkinson, and you've got Aaron Jones as a running back who understands, yeah. dude. He's he understands protection. He understands how to keep his quarterback upright, and you know he's had many years playing with Aaron Rodgers. He knows how to be able to, you know, take one for his quarterback and protect him. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think offensively, like they're going to be fine. Yeah. Like, I think they, they I, should be pretty good um, offensively. Well, you know, it remains to be seen, but in that division, like teams got better, right? Um, yeah, they sure did. So everybody in that division got better. 
everybody. Yeah, so it's it's going to be one of the tougher ones in football next year for sure. Um, Absolutely, one of the hardest ones I think that I have to pick. Uh, but anyhow, any other ones you wanted to talk about before we wrap up here? No, that's it. Like I said, it was a it was a wild draft. Um, a lot of it went chalk, like I think everybody thought it was going to. Mm-hmm. Um, really, it was just. It, it was Atlanta drafting Penix at eight and the Vikings moving up one spot and giving up the farm for McCarthy. <laughs> I, I think we're the two like really wild things. But other than that though, like everybody pretty much thought that Williams was going to go one Daniels two, may three. Yeah. Alt at five Harrison at four. Like, yeah, no, it was, it was what we expected. And I, I I'm really excited because this receiver class is deep this year. So I'm really excited to see how that pays off. Yeah, I'm 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 excited too. I want to see the playmakers. I I want to see how this is gonna how it's gonna unfold in the league this year and how these guys are gonna have their impact. Uh, that's gonna kind of determine if they're worth it or not, right? So it's yeah. really really exciting for that. But um, let's uh let's jump into a, the trivia question. So last week, uh, did we answer who? No, we didn't. We said, yep. who was the, the last number one pick in the NFL draft to win a Super Bowl? And this was a quarterback question. And mm-hmm. this was Matt Stafford for the Rams. Yep. And then we also asked the number one overall pick, uh, or he was the number one overall pick in 2009. The last number overall number one pick to win a Super Bowl, though, was actually... Uh, Eric Fisher yep. uh, with the Chiefs. Yep. He was drafted number one in 2013. And what was like probably one of the shittier drafts in my recent memory. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, he was he was the guy. And who knows? Could there be a new one after this year? Uh, we, we will see. Um, yeah. <laughs> we will have to see for that. But uh, Al, you want to give him the new trivia question that we've got? Yeah. So this will, this will be the last draft related question. Um, so the Chicago Bears uh, ended up selecting number one overall and actually using the pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the trivia question is, what was the when was the last time that Chicago actually drafted number one overall? Yeah. Last year, not counting because they traded that pick away. Uh, so so the last time the Chicago Bears actually selected somebody at number one, which what is what year was that? It's crazy. It surprised me when you told me. So yeah. All right. Well, good luck on that, guys. Uh, uh and we will be back what next week? uh yes, next week giving you some more coverage and stuff we'll have some baseball stuff for you um i thought before we go i thought max Fried was going to throw a no hitter on technically my birthday day here but no that that was too good to be true so i was uh, watching that game and i wanted to text you but i was like nah I don't yeah. want to jinx it. I don't <laughs> that's okay you know what it is you know what jinxed it i i went into espn and i started to watch the game cast and that's what jinxed it um, after that, it all went downhill. If I didn't touch it, if I didn't look at it, it would have been fine. But because I looked at it, I ruined it. So and in classic and in classic Atlanta fashion, too, their bullpen blew it. Which yep. was in the bottom of the ninth. Chef's kiss. Yeah. Chef's kiss. Listen, I got a whole you week to whole stew week. on it, and we'll 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 talk about it next week. But uh, yeah, listen, just glad to be back doing another one with you. Um, again, we'll be back next week. Cover some baseball stuff, some NFL news, all of that stuff. But. Uh, You guys stay safe. Have fun. Al, I love you, bro. And uh, have a good rest of the week, man. Willie, I love you. Stay safe. Peace. Peace.